I'm pastor here at St. Matthias. Uh, I welcome you to worship. So nice to have you all here on this homecoming Sunday, this time of remembrance and gathering to share your collective time together, things you grew up with, things you remember, good and bad, everything. And so afterwards, there'll be a time that you can do that with refreshments over in the fellowship hall. So you just go out the door and to your right, and then there's restrooms over there as well. Okay. So for communion today, we invite all to the communion table. We'll be doing it by intinction. So I'll be standing here, and then Jay will help me. So you'll receive the wafer from me, and then take your wafer and put it in the wine, and then return to your seat. You'll be directed by two of our ushers so that we can be orderly. If you are more comfortable receiving communion in your seat, there are disposables in the back. If anybody needs those, either raise your hand now or during communion and we'll get somebody to help you. Okay. Kathy Gold is our musician today, so we thank her for playing for us. And Margie will be reading for us. And anybody or anything I've forgotten congregation, things you want them to know and remember. Yes, Avian. Just that I just received um, letters from Tom Steed and MJ, and they are really sorry, but they have worship services to do this morning. And I got an, a text from Mary Sherman, and Gary is doing much better, and they are with us in spirit. Thank you. Also, I'm just remembering because I'm seeing the camera, worship is being recorded today. So do know that if you are coming forward, you will be on camera. It will get posted to Facebook and YouTube, just so you know. Just have an awareness of that. Okay. Kathy, anything we should know about music today? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> They're all familiars. All, well, hopefully all familiar to you. Um, you should hopefully have a bulletin. If you do not, I think there's a couple of extras. Otherwise, please share. Everything you need is in there. So please follow along with your bulletin. Any prayer concerns, things you all want us to have in mind this morning as we gather in worship? <laughs> joy. That's what we have. Joy. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God. Anybody? Then we begin our time of worship with confession and forgiveness. I ask you all to rise as you are able. I'm sorry. Sit down, stand <laughs> I'm just getting you ready. <laughs> see, it's a test. See if you listen to me. No, I'm sorry. Prepare your hearts for worship. <clears throat>
Now, if you would all please rise as you are able, we will confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Yes. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have heard our unity, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked courage to see, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, Forgive us and grant us your mercy. Friends, God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in the opening hymn, When Morning Fills the Skies. It's number 546 in the books in front of you. 546.
to remember, to commemorate, and to honor and glorify you in this place of worship. Continue to bind us together in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <laughs>
How many loaves do you have? They said, seven. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and after having given thanks, he broke them, and he gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They had also a few small fish, and after blessing them, he ordered that these two should be distributed. They ate, and they were filled, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. Now there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. And immediately he got into the boat with his disciples, and he went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came, and they began to argue with him, asking him for signs from heaven to test him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <laughs> Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. Well, some of you may know that the plans for this building were made clear in the documents that we have from 1829. In the 100th anniversary of this congregation, the deed for the ground upon which we worship today makes clear that the building of the stone church near Sulphur Springs and near North Middleton Township would occur. The cost for doing so, five dollars. <laughs> Paid to Matthias Bronowell by George Brindle and Lewis Mickey, the first trustees of this community. The sanctuary costs, $372 and some change. With 107 persons known as, in those days, subscribers for this Lutheran and Reformed Church. And while there is no official record of when the cornerstone was laid or when the ground was broken, we know it was done because here we stand in this place where our ancestors worked together with many different kinds of resources and gifts to erect a sanctuary with stone. The stones, the digging, the excavating were done without all of the modern machinery that we now have. Animal and human labor moved dirt and probably rocks because it is Pennsylvania, <laughs> to build the foundation of this worship space. Horses and wagons brought worshipers. Collective hard work was an integral part of this community. Foundation work, as you know, is so very important for building structures. What rests on it depends on the support and strength of that base. That has been known for a long time as humans, with the help of animals, have built places of shelter and safety. We read about it in history. We see it in ancient sites and museums around the world. And we even hear about it in scripture. For anyone who listens to scripture, Jesus says, those who follow me, they are wise. They are like the person who builds their home on solid rock. Though the rains come and the floodwaters rise and the winds blow against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on solid rock. But for those who do not listen, those who do not follow, he says they are like the foolish person who builds their home on sand. When the rains and floods and winds come, the house collapses with a mighty crash. Now, for some of you that have been with me since last October when I started, you know that my husband and I have a small cabin a couple of hours west of here. It's just outside a very small farm community where both his parents were raised. Well, the land where the cabin stands is what is left of his great-grandfather's farm. 
It slopes downwards, and it has several springs. Well, the cabin we have now is fairly new, but that old cabin built by his grandfather during the Depression days when money was very scarce, it was laid on stones and rocks for the foundation, and it was built, unfortunately, where some of the springs were. And so you can guess what happened over time. Erosion shifted the rocks, and parts of the cabin started sinking. There were attempts to fix the problem, but with many more people inheriting it and not always wanting to put money into it, the problems worsened. So much so that it wasn't safe to be there anymore. Mold and mildew, there was no heating system, just a wood stove. They were present as animals, mice, and even some squirrels made their way in to the old place. Still, knowing even that we couldn't be there, it was hard for my husband when we finally had to tear it down. So many memories of our family times, so many gatherings, so much good history. Well, you know, even when it is clear that the time has come to get rid of something which seems so foundational to our identity, we do have a hard time. My husband and I sometimes speculate as to whether it could have been saved if it had proper attention in the early days when it had first started failing that foundation. But we concluded that it wasn't likely as it was so unstable from the beginning. It just wasn't built to last. You know, buildings, homes, and those things that have a very strong foundation, they can still be destroyed by weather events like the tornadoes in Texas this past week, or hurricanes that are beginning their season, or human-made events like wars that we are witnessing in the Ukraine and Sudan, or accidents like the recent gas explosion in Paris. It is hard when places we have lived or have made memories in cease to exist no matter what the reason. Well, the people who are listening to Jesus in this place, they have been there for a few days. They are away from their homes, their places of safety, some from great distances. There are men and women and children, families, friends, strangers, and presumably animals to carry their cargo. They sleep at night on the ground, maybe in tents or some other shelter like under olive or cypress trees. Each day they awake to hear the teacher from Galilee talk to them about what it means to live fully and freely in faith, the faith of their ancestors a continuation of that eternal covenant, a relationship with God, but one that seems to be changing. Because this Jesus talks about God for all people, no matter their station in life, their cultural context, their vocation, their gender, or age. Those who are called to believe and trust in the one true God of the ages. It's okay. He just wants to be closer to the one. <laughs> After days of listening and using what resources they have brought with them, Jesus can see that people are hungry, and as is Jesus' nature, he has compassion upon the people. He's concerned that even if he sends them away now, some might not make the journey. They may faint or pass out on the way. So he tells his disciples to feed them. But the disciples have only brought enough for their group, and 
for the leader. And so they ask him, what are we supposed to do? How can we do this with the meager bread that we have? Jesus will show them how. After commanding the crowd to sit down, he takes the set of loaves that the disciples have given him, and he gives thanks to the Father. Breaking the bread apart, he gives them to the disciples to hand out to all the people, along with a few small fish that have also been blessed. Everyone receives what is shared, and they were fed. When the leftover was collected, they had seven baskets full, more than what they began with. Over 4,000 people were fed that day by what most would see as meager amounts of food for this massive crowd. Jesus has shown the people, the disciples, and us what it means that God is part of our lives. What can be done with what we consider little when God is called upon with a humble and loving heart, with faith and thanksgiving. And then he sends the people away home, fed and nourished in mind, body, and spirit. The last action is perhaps the most impactful, the one they will almost surely always remember, the one they will tell to their children that will be passed down to their grandchildren, on and on, this beautiful act of compassion and love, a testimony of God's abundance, a teaching of what it means to ask for God's help and blessing, a reminder that God makes all things possible according to God's will. And it was done in a desert, in a desert, not in a building, not in a synagogue, not in the great temple, not in a church. The foundation of what was coming was built that day among all kinds of people who came to listen to the one they had heard about, who travels across countryside, towns, villages, and seashores, and cities with the most unlikely of followers, the most unlikely of disciples. And he is just beginning to make himself known through these healing and miraculous works. Many are wondering who he is. The disciples are just starting to find out. And the detractors, the ones who came to see him when he arrived in Dalmanutha, well, they come to argue with him, demanding signs from heaven and testing him. Undoubtedly, they have heard of what he has been doing, casting out demons and spirits, and that latest news of feeding the masses in the desert for meager amounts of food, it surely has reached the seaside town. But just like we sometimes do, they demand more proof. Perhaps because it is not what they expected. Perhaps because it is not who they expected. Or maybe because they didn't directly witness these acts. Or it could be they had their own vision of who and what God is, and Jesus is shattering their views and beliefs. Maybe, maybe they felt their foundation of what had been taught all their lives was being torn down. Jesus does come to tear down our self-made illusions, my friends our grand conceptions of who we think God is, our desires of what we want God to be, who we want God to punish or save, our human-made visions of the way things should be in our minds can often overshadow the immenseness of God, the one who comes in the form of a son, 
who is the foundation of our lives in faith, the one we can rely on in all times, good and bad, sad and joyous, chaotic and unexpected, disappointed and uplifting. Jesus comes among us now. Jesus is present with us this day as we worship in this place as his body. He will be present with you as you recall your times here, the memories you have, the relationships that were nurtured and fed in faith. My friends, we are always part of him, and he in us, no matter where we call home, including our places of worship. Jesus keeps on feeding us in the abundance of God, who continues to do the impossible in a world that often turns in on itself, seeking its own ways instead of the divine. And the foundation was laid years ago. So many layers of dirt and water below us, ones that we cannot count, like the stars of the cosmos, the grains of sand on the beach, or the descendants of Abraham. My friends, the promise is eternal. The love is everlasting, and the hope is ongoing because it comes through the one sent by the Almighty for all people this day and forevermore. Your home is with him, with a foundation that never fails, and it has been written on your hearts by the God who remembers you and never, never,
that we share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You care for all of creation. Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Open our ears to hear the voice of those who call for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. There is much violence and chaos in our world. Send relief to your people and nations experience con conflict or distress or crisis, especially the Ukraine. Guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, you care for us beyond measure and you remember us always. Abide with those who are experiencing poverty homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation. Look favorably upon all who struggle in mind, body, and spirit. Especially today, we name before you Margie, Billy, Dave, Tim, Lisa's family, Sabrina, Robert, Rebecca, Claire, Shirley's family, Jen, Denise, Bill, Margaret, DJ, Jenny, George, Clay, Danielle, Wayne, and Darlene, and those we remember aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of the St. Matthias community. As we celebrate and remember the gift of your son, Jesus, bless all who are present today with the gift of memories made in your name. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. All who have died with Christ also live with him. We give thanks for all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship. Raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O Lord, receive our prayers and answer us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with one another. <laughs>
loving God, God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels of the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 heaven, power, and might, heaven, and earth,
take the bread, dip it in the wine that Jay will be holding, and then return to your seats. For those of you receiving communion in your seats with the disposables, please know when you hear the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, we are all receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in one communion. <laughs>
rise and you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn, The Church's One Foundation, 369 in the books in front. Thank you. 